Welcome my dear colleagues to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, National Heart Institute, Egypt. Today, my presentation will be about an experimental drug for post weight loss and diabetes control. The drug appears to outperform the trendy medication semaglutide. So, what is the new drug? It is retatrotide or LY. 34 Let us see what is the drug. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more video updates. Retatrotide or LY is a new medication created by the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly which is a single peptide conjugated to a fatty diacid moiety and has agonism towards the glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, glucagon-like peptide 1, and glucagon receptors. In comparison to the dual agonist-like terzapeptide, the addition of glucagon receptor agonism to the molecule improves energy expenditure, increases weight loss, and controls hyperglycemia. Retatrotide has a half-life of six days, which enables once weekly subcutaneous injection of the drug. Retatrotide is 1.7-fold less potent compared to glucagon-like peptide 1 hormone at glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor sites and 2.5-fold less potent compared to glucagon at glucagon receptor sites, but 7 folds more potent compared to glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide hormone at glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptor sites. This imbalance in receptors agonism enables the balancing of glucagon hyperglycemic effects with anti-hyperglycemic properties of glucagon-like peptide 1. The peptide drug has a triagonist action targeting the main three receptors of blood glucose and energy balance in human body which are glucagon receptors, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptors, and glucagon-like peptide 1 receptors. Those receptors are expressed on cell surface of different tissues. Here we will summarize the main agonist activity of retatrotide on its three receptors. First, we will start with glucagon receptors. Glucagon receptors are class B of G protein coupled receptors expressed on cell surface, mainly in liver and kidney, and to less degree in intestinal smooth muscles, brain, adipose tissue, adrenal gland, heart, and in both alpha and beta pancreatic cells. The modulation of those receptors plays an important role in treatment of type 2 diabetes and plays an important role in regulation of satiety, thermogenesis, energy expenditure, and control of lipid metabolism. Glucagon and satiety The anorexogenic action of glucagon is initiated in the hepatic portal vein. Where the hepatic branch of the vagus nerve senses glucagon levels and conveys the satiety signals to the central nervous system, resulted in decreased food intake. Glucagon and energy expenditure. The glucagon is through increasing the activity of fibroblast growth factor 21, which is the key modulator of fatty acid oxidation and lipid metabolism. 
promotes an increase in the energy expenditure and contribute to catabolic states, resulted in decreased body weight and fat mass. Glucagon receptors activation plays an important role in the pathophysiology of thermogenesis. The activation of those receptors induces sympathetic nervous system to increase the activity of uncoupling protein 1 or thermogenin, which facilitates the process of non-shivering thermogenesis. The uncoupling protein 1 or thermogenin is an integral membrane protein found in the mitochondrial inner membrane of the brown adipose tissue. Glucagon and lipid metabolism. Glucagon in white adipose tissue increases the activity of hormone sensitive lipase through different mediators, resulting in controlling of lipid metabolism by increasing lipolysis, increasing ketogenesis, decreasing lipogenesis. Those actions contribute to weight reduction. The second type of receptors targeted by retatrotide are the glucagon-like peptide 1 receptors, which found it in pancreatic beta cells, GIT cells, and central nervous system cells. The first effect of activation of such receptors by retatrotide on type 2 diabetes is the lowering of blood glucose levels through increasing insulin synthesis, enhancing insulin secretion, improving insulin sensitivity, and suppression of glucagon secretion. While the second effect in obesity is the reduction of body weight through the hypothalamus to reduce food intake decreasing gastric embittying and increasing lipolysis and fatty acid oxidation and increasing energy consumption. The third type of receptors targeted by retatrotide are the glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptors. The effects of activation of such receptors by retatrotide are First, in the central nervous system, resulted in decreased food intake, decreased body weight, and decreased nausea. Second, in pancreas, resulted in increased insulin synthesis and increased glucagon synthesis. Third, in subcutaneous white adipose tissue, resulted in increased insulin sensitivity. Force in the skeletal muscles resulted in increased insulin sensitivity. And fifth, the systemic effect resulted in decreased blood glucose levels and decreased dietary triglycerides. So to summarize the mechanism of action of retatrotide, retatrotide has a triple agonist activity at the glucagon glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide and glucagon-like peptide 1 receptors. Retatrodide increased energy expansion through glucagon receptor activation caused greater body weight reduction. Retatrodide works by targeting the three different hormone receptors resulted in clinical meaningful improvement in blood sugar control. The doses which were used in the experimental trials were 1 mg, 2 mg, 4 mg, 8 mg, and 12 mg once weekly subcutaneous injection. The side effects of retatrotide are comparable to the other glucagon like peptide 1 agonists, like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dyspepsia. Increase in lipase levels, hypersensitivity reactions, hepatic disorders, biliary disorders, and pancreatitis.
What is the available clinical evidence for the use of retrotite? Up to date, a pair of early clinical trial results are available. The phase 2 retrotite diabetes trial and the phase 2 retrotite obesity trial. Retrotide will now advance to phase 3 clinical trial. Triumph trial program that will gather the evidence supporting the drug for approval in USA. In diabetes phase 2 clinical trial, retrotide produced meaningful improvement of homoglobin A1C compared to dolaglutide and significant improvement compared to placebo. In the phase two clinical trial, triple hormone receptor agonist retetrotide for obesity, it was found that the obese people in highest dose of retetrotide dropped more than 17% of their weight on the average after 24 weeks compared to 1.6% in placebo. After 48 weeks, the weight loss progressed to 24% with retrotide compared to 2.1% with placebo. In conclusion, retrotide is a novel injectable once weekly weight loss and anti-diabetic drug. We are waiting for further clinical trials to inform more about the efficacy and safety of retrotide. At the end, thank you, my dear colleagues, for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in the next video, and goodbye.